What's going on YouTube? Josh here with another episode of the Research Review Series. So today's article is going to be on a pretty interesting topic. I think that a lot of us have heard a lot about. The topic is the anabolic window. And, you know, if you guys have read any of the muscle magazines or bodybuilding.com and things like that, for years they've been preaching that you need to have protein within 30 minutes of working out or your gains will go to shit. <laughs> That's pretty much bullshit, alright? So I'm going to show you guys some of the science behind how that is complete bogus. So today's article comes from the Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition. It was actually just published in December of 2013. The title of the article is called The Effect of Protein Timing on Muscle Strength and Hypertrophy, a Meta-Analysis. Now this research was done by three big names in the game. So it was done by Brad Schoenfeld, Alan Aragon, and James Krieger. So uh, let's get right to the research. Uh, basically, you know, up to now, there's been quite a mix of research where some of the research shows that protein timing is really important, some of it shows no effect. So, essentially what these guys tried to do is compile all of the data that they currently have on protein timing and see what happens when they put it all together. What do all these studies really show? So, the inclusion criteria that they used to select studies that they were going to look at, uh, essentially the studies had to be a randomized control trial or a randomized crossover trial that involved protein timing. And the endpoints that they measured were some degree, some measure of strength and some measure of hypertrophy. What essentially they required for each of these studies is that the group that was receiving the protein within a certain period of time uh, was receiving a minimum of 6 grams of essential amino acids uh, within one hour pre and or post uh, resistance exercise and the control group did not consume protein in under two hours pre and or post exercise. All right, so that's your time frame. So your, your treatment group got protein within one hour before and after, um, and your control group did not have any protein within two hours before two hours after. All right, so essentially they were able to find 23 studies that fit their criteria that had enough data for them to pull together and look at the results. Now, I'm not gonna have you guys go through all the studies, but I just think it's important to note that there was quite a bit of variability between the studies. So for instance, some of the studies included people who were males, some that were only females. Many of the studies included people that were untrained, so you know, had not been lifting weights before, were new to resistance exercise. And that's an important note that I'll discuss later. Additionally, the protein that they received was also quite different. So it ranged from things like uh, protein powders to chocolate milk to, you know, other different kinds of protein. Some was whey protein, some was casein. The key here is that they all had at least six grams of essential amino acids. So that was kind of the way that they were able to sort of equalize and look at this all together. So what are the results of the study? Essentially, they were able to do some fancy statistical analysis to compile the results and find some meaningful data from this. Essentially, once they were able to control for any confounding variables, they found that there was absolutely no difference between the treatment group and the control group as far as protein timing goes in this study. All right? So that is to say that there was, there's no difference if you consume protein within an hour, you know, around your workout, or you know, two hours. It makes no difference. That's essentially what they're saying here. So what was interesting was the fact that for hypertrophy, the most important indicator of success causing the most hypertrophy was total protein intake. And they actually found where you have an increased effect, the greater protein you had. Obviously that was up to a limit, and they didn't really discuss that top limit. But it seems that the pro total protein intake was m more important for hypertrophy because actually total protein intake was not um, a key factor in determining increases in strength. So what's also um, interesting I think in this study is that the average protein intake in the treatment groups, the groups that were receiving the protein uh, supplementation before or after workout, they were only receiving a daily amount of around 1.66 grams per kilogram of body weight. So to put things into perspective, I weigh around 80 kilograms, so for a guy my size, 80 kilograms like 175, 176 pounds, that would only be around 130 grams of protein. And I'm sure most of you guys are probably consuming a lot more than that. So what do we take from these results? You know, was this study done perfectly? No, of course not. There's, there's flaws in every study. So what are some of the limitations of this study in particular? Well, firstly, the control groups had very variable timing 
of their protein meals or whenever they receive their protein, right? So in this study, they only required that the control groups had to have not consumed protein two hours before and after, but there was a wide range, so that could have, you know, caused some variability in the, in the data and that could have skewed the results potentially. Secondly, in the majority of the studies, so pretty much like 20 out of 23 of the studies, there were untrained participants. So we know that, you know, trained participants and untrained are actually quite different in the way that they handle macronutrients. Um, essentially, the, their bodies are just, you know, once you've trained, your body adapts to that training stimulus and you're able to essentially partition nutrients in a different way. In fact, in the study, they even mentioned that for trained bodybuilders, they're able to avoid burning and using protein as an energy source as low as 1.4 grams per kilogram of body weight. So that's an interesting uh, note that they referenced from a previous study. And finally, very few of the timing studies attempted to match the protein intake um, between both the treatment and the control group. So that can also potentially um, hinder some of the reliability of this data. What are the practical implications? I just told you guys about some of the limitations of the study. Honestly, you know, when you're looking at a meta-analysis, you're, you're only going to be able to get collect data that's essentially as good from the individual studies. It's the best of what's available. Um, you know, until people are doing better research, this is the best what we have. And uh, the researchers did do a good job of trying to control for some of the confounding variables. Essentially, based on the research that we have now, guys, anabolic window of, you know, within an hour is baloney. What's important to note is that there is certainly still the possibility that there is a larger anabolic window, but that was not addressed in this study. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind what's important from this is that total protein intake is probably the most important. So if you work out and you can't have any protein for two or three hours, you should not be beating yourself up about that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it interesting. If you guys would like to see any um, specific articles addressed um, in the research review series, be sure to comment below. And make sure, if you haven't already, to subscribe to the channel, guys. If you liked the video, give the video a like, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.